for bitch asses. I want this little tough right here. You the tough Who the gangster, huh? What's up, Who pussy tough, boy? Huh? You think you're tough? Huh? Some wannabe tough kids end up in the program, and now they're about to be acquitted to real gangsters who are clearly eager to meet the tough guys they'd heard so much about. You're like us. Is this what the f you want to do? What's your name, boy? You ain't got no name. You're a f number in here. You be locked up. You like to touch on your ass, huh? You look like you change. Have a seat. The inmates are eager to meet the kids who are not as eager to meet people they want to be like. They should be more excited to meet gangsters, but they look quite scared. Guess you're not so tough when you see the real deal, huh? I want this right here, right here. Gang banging. Gang banging? You're a little punk ass. Hey, George, you say you're Blackstone. You're Blackstone? Can't this inmate wants a more personal meeting with the toughest guy in the room. He looks genuinely shocked that a soft-looking kid like him would claim to be a gangster. It's George. I'm being accused of three counts of aggravated battery with a firearm. Jail's realer than they look on TV. It ain't nothing to play with. That gang bang ain't no gang bang. George has to educate the kid on what it means to be a gangster and just how much you can trust the people in your gang. Oh, no lit, man. He ain't in no gang, man. Poles are out there claiming that he don't even know nothing about. Bring that in here and get your ass whooped. For real. Put your ass up under the bunk after whooping your ass for 30 minutes and go a whole nother 30 minutes with your bitch ass. For real. Justin, another inmate, reveals that this kid knows nothing about the gang he respects so much. This pisses George off so much that he has to paint a pretty picture of what it'd be like to spend time with him in person. You ever been in trouble before, little boy? Yeah. For what? Speak up. I can't hear you. My I heard that bitch ass snitching on my That's what he doing. You I snitch? heard you out there snitching. I've never been a snitch. You, you're a snitch for me if I want you to. I don't think that any of these kids would like to be classified as fresh meat. But with the path they're on, they're headed towards the prisons where they will be, no doubt, treated as such. They'll take you, man. You'll be, you'll wind up in a bitch somewhere. You ain't even got a loud voice, man. Can't even hear you scream. Bitch ass. Even if it looks like the kid is not listening, Justin's voice is so close and loud that he'll probably hear it in his sleep. Stand your ass up, punk. You wants to be on the block. What block you from? What block you from? Let me get him, man. Do you think you a tough, right? Huh? Hustle Man is the oldest gangster in the room. The kid has pissed him off so much that he has to tell him about where he wants to put his shoes in incredible detail. They call me Hustle Man. All that bull these kids doing out on the streets, we not taking that up in here. I'm the big dog, so when with that bull, I'm gonna set their ass straight. Hustle Man is in for murder, so he's been in the system long and hard enough. Hustle Man doesn't seem to appreciate wannabe gangsters in his prison space. I like like you. You pretty to me, man. The kid gets a compliment from Hustle Man, but not the type he would have liked to get. The compliment is filled with a lot of nasty implications. You think it's a game, though, don't you? Yes, you do, because you one of them tough You know what I do to tough like you, man, huh? I sell that boy for zuzus and wham whams. He's barely five minutes in this room, and Hustle Man has already told the kid how his prison's life's gonna go. You can tell that Hustle Man means everything that he says. The look on the kid's face says he wants nothing to do with this gangster. Treat you like a bitch. You gonna call my chest, sir, whenever I tell you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and this old whole ass gonna do it Thursday, Friday. The other wrist rocking looking inmate, who we're going to call Rick Loss, shows two of the boys in the room what they'll be doing on weekdays. If the kids don't change their ways and they end up in prison, they'll gladly not come to this prison. Give him the comb, man. Make him a comb. comb. You know what? Open it up. Comb his chest. Comb his chest right now. Said. Bitch, look while you're doing it. That's what I, I wish you don't do it. Rick Loss shows the boys a preview of how he wants his tasks done if they ever end up in prison. If this isn't enough to keep you out of jail, then nothing will ever be enough. I wish you don't do it, I'm sorry. I'm glad. Right. You sorry, folks. Grab the comb, man. Grab it. The tough kid refuses to grab the comb, and that pisses off the most dangerous gangster in the room. Hustle Man has murder in his eyes, but the kid looks ready to face it, at least as long as there are guards to come to his rescue. Yo, it's the last time I'm gonna tell you. Grab that comb, man. 
Grab that cone, man. Do the I tell you. Man, get the ball for me, man. Grab that cone, dog. I oughta beat your ass. Man, let me go, man. Let me go, man. I oughta beat your ass. The tough kid narrowly escapes the fate that awaits wannabe gangsters in prison when they don't do as they're told. Even the kid looks more than relieved as guards save him from certain pain. You know what you gonna do? I'm coming back for your ass. You wanna be in the I'm coming back for your ass. The kids may be relieved Tussle Man was dragged from the room, but the other inmates don't appreciate what just happened. Let's just say the kid is lucky that he has backup. He may not have lived through the experience. Beat this yeah, don't look back that boy. Did nobody tell you that? You better be glad, boy. He gonna turn hold of your little young ass. This is not for little kids. It's grown. The kid is so traumatized by the notorious hustle man, he has to constantly look over his shoulder to make sure that the scary gangster's not coming back to make good on his promise. Grown ass man, men out there doing grown ass things. Do if you get in there with my homie that just walked out of here. When you're in behind the cage. Justin makes a good case for why you don't want to end up in jail. We're sure that there's no kid in that room that wants to share a bunk with Hustle Man. Even the tough kid looks pretty convinced by that line of thinking. Ice mother Mike. Well, hey, Mike, inmate number 4151. I'm in here for shoplifting, stealing out of stores. I run that mother I hate seeing you. Ice Mike might be in jail for just theft, but he's as gangster as they come, and his encounter with these gangster wannabe kids will convince you of that fact. No problem. You want to fight, huh? Yeah. Oh, you like fight? want you to hold this for me. If we put this on bitches like you, you're going to be my bitch. Ice Mike immediately establishes his dominance with all the young fight enthusiasts. He does so with Kool-Aid, of all things, and it works like a charm. Who knew Kool-Aid would ever be used as a tool for intimidation? Lick your lips. Now stick your hand in that Kool-Aid. Just stick it in the... Come here. Now I kiss you, you orange flavor. Ice Mike uses the Kool-Aid in such a creative way you'd never expect it. So imagine what he would do if he had tools made for the purpose of intimidation. It ain't personal with you either because you white. <laughs> David is lucky that he's white. We're not sure he wants to know what happens when Ice Mike takes things personally. You over here, damn it, like it's a joke. Crack another smile, I'll get some more time, I'll choke your ass. What the The first rule of being in this type of situation is not to laugh when someone else is getting roasted because there's a good chance that you'll be next. Unfortunately, no one gave Renee the menu, and now she's on Ice Mike's radar. Talk to me, mother Failing. Still we don't know if she's aware of the fact that she's staring at the type of person she wants to be if she continues down her path of theft. But what we do know is that she's petrified of Ice Mike. I'm in here for stealing out of Walmart. They trying to give me eight years for a damn iPod. I would tell you excuse me for spitting on you, but f*** you. I done been in prison 14 times. I ain't no murder, but you want to steal. Ice Mike lets Renee know the implication of her stealing. It's almost like he can't believe that she would willingly choose to go down that path. And you like fighting, huh? You want to fight me, homie? Huh? You want to fight me? Come on, let's fight. Come on. Get you one off. I promise you, man, I would not hit you back. Get you one off. Because I'll get your ass when these cameras come off. Ice Mike faces David again and offers him a free smoke, but David has had the fight knocked out of him and doesn't want any of the smoke Ice Mike is offering. With my fingers in Kool-Aid, he made me put it on my lip. That made me feel nasty. David shared his experience on how Ice Mike's treatment made him feel. The Kool-Aid might have worked a little too well. My name's Travis. I'm in here on battery. I got a problem. I had it for a long time. Long time. Started when I was 10 years old, caught my first charge. I've been in and out of system since then. I'm 22. Despite how young he looks, this inmate has been in the game for a while. Unfortunately, he was not lucky enough to enter a program that would have steered him from that life. And now he's here trying to make sure these kids understand how lucky they are. Now that's gangster. Y'all tough. Y'all can hit me in the face right now. You think you're tough, but you're not. Let me tell you something. This get on you. This that him. Ground in less than 10 seconds. Just that. Most young people who love picking fights have never picked a fight with a prison inmate. You don't want to be cornered by any of these guys. And I'm not going to with this big and I've been fighting my whole life. And them flip-flops would have already been mine. That shirt you're wearing would have been mine. Your name tag, I would have took that 
I wore it myself just so I could show that you're my bitch. The inmate lets Anthony know what happens in prison. There's always someone bigger that'll make you reconsider your love for fighting. Don't you feel good? You should be taking care of her. What happens if you go to prison one day and someone breaks in your house and with your mom and your sister? You're gonna live with that for the rest of your life. Bringing his sister into the conversation's a low blow, but you don't expect a prison inmate to fight fair. And you, you hit your mom this morning? You, you wanna still get your second chance to hit me in the mouth? Come on, hit me in the mouth. You ain't Yeah, you're still shaking your head, but you still ain't hit me. I'll give you many opportunities. You wanna try again? You need some spit, for real. What are you gonna do? You're gonna hit me in the mouth? That's exactly what the I want. Willie hits his mom, but when he comes to hitting someone who can hit back, he rethinks his life choices and can only come up with weak words. With any of y'all. My name is Mustafa, man. I'm 29. I did eight years in prison. They call me Moo. There's so much more to life than being locked up, man. You got an opportunity to be somebody, man, be somebody. I ain't about being wise, smart, making good decisions, dog. I've been selling drugs since I was 15. This is what it got me. Because when I was young, y'all age, I'm taking the police on high speed chases and shit. So my license f***ed up from dumb shit. Get you beat up in here. Moose scare tactics is straight up motivation. After what he said, even some of us can loosen up and become vulnerable a bit because always trying to act tough will land you in the wrong place with the wrong people. I'm hard, I'm tough, but I don't have to walk around and act hard and act tough. Why you laughing like it's funny? There's no doubt that Moose a tough guy who won't go down easy. Willie still doesn't understand what it means to be tough and shows in his attitude. Half, man. What the f you think you can find? Bitch, I got 40 years, bro. F you right now, man. Right now. It don't mean f man. Yeah. F you. F you, punk. Willie's attitude has hit a nerve of an inmate that is definitely not as nice as Moo. One that's not afraid to spit in his face and see what he'll do about it. I'll f you up quick. I don't get f about none of these in here. I don't get too. <laughs> Was mad at her. She pissed you off. Why you hit him? Come on, man. You a coward, bro. Your A game's not big enough, buddy. Man, man, face up. That ain't cool. I just showed you. That just showed you. You ain't tough. Want it? Y'all like it? Y'all want it? The inmates trigger Willie and show him he's not as tough as he acts. Willie's barely holding back his fears, and it's obvious that the inmates are close to the mark. You're not tough if the only people you can hit are the ones that can't or won't hit you back. I got all kind of time, y'all still ain't worth it. I just read bash in your face. It must hurt when someone with all the time in the world doesn't have your time. Willie's definitely not feeling tough right now. You a punk, dude. I don't care. I slap your damn sister if she was in here. See what no, you, you do wouldn't. about see what you do about no, it. No, you wouldn't. This inmate is a specialist in triggering people, and Anthony is next. He doesn't mind bringing up Anthony's sister, who's so scared that she can't even look at the inmates. I'm in a hole. I'll make you mad now. Wait till you come in here. There's a way to square this in here. Yeah, I'm done with y'all. All right, guys. Line up. Head back. The inmate makes sure he gives Willie a nice goodbye message. Also, he promises Willie some special treatment if he ever finds his way into this prison. Keep your head up, what? They're going back to their cells. Don't look at them, Alyssa. Alyssa is the most traumatized of the group, and it's safe to say that she's been scared straight by just being near real gangsters. It's not an abnormal reaction, after all. Inmates are not the nicest people in the world. Anthony hurt? I can tell. There's a way to change that. Anthony has also been hit hard by the experience. The truth that he was powerless to help his sister must have shocked him to his core.